Okay, let's go ahead and figure out the solution to this nice little math word problem here. And of course, the first step in solving any problem in mathematics is to read the problem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It says a truck has a 28 gallon gas tank. It can travel 40 miles on 1.7 gallons. How far can it go on 19 gallons? So if you think you can figure this problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section and feel free to use a calculator. That, that is not a problem. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, we're going to walk through the steps to solve this respective math word problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It is my true calling, my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you out there can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with mathematics. Please do not give up. There's absolute hope. Let me tell you the three things you need to be successful in math. One, you got to be willing to work hard. So if you've been looking, you know, been trying to take shortcuts and looking for the easy way out, stop looking. There is no such thing. You got to be willing to put in the work. So that's step number one. Step number two is you need encouragement. Okay, and this is particularly important when you run into a stumbling block or you get to a math course or topic that you know you're just frustrated with. You have to keep going. There is a path forward, right? You need someone encouraging you that you can do this stuff. The third thing you need, and probably the most important thing you need, is great math instruction, okay? You need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand, okay? Then there's nothing more frustrated, frustrating than being in a classroom and, and totally not getting what's going on, all right? I'm not trying to knock any math teachers out there, but... Math is a very technical subject, and, and sometimes it can be taught in a you know overly technical manner. The way I like to uh, teach math is to explain things in easy to understand language, so all students can get what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So, if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for that has math on it. I'm talking about things like the GED, ASVAB, SAT, teacher certification exam, or if you happen to be homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave uh, links to my detailed, comprehensive math notes in the description as well. You need notes to study from. Hopefully you have your own notes, but if your uh, notes are not up to par, you need to work on that. But you can use my uh, notes in the meantime, and if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this problem, and here it is. 447.07 miles. So if you got something pretty close to this, if you're off a little bit, maybe 448 or 446, and basically if you're in this ballpark, you got this answer correct. So let's go ahead and celebrate your success with a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family today. You can just go onto your social media and everything, be like, listen, I solved a math word problem. I am awesome. And indeed you are. Now, if you struggle with this, don't give up. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how to do this particular problem. All right, so what is the first step uh, to solve a math word problem or any math uh, problem at that? Well, I told you in the beginning of this video, it is to read the problem. But when you're dealing with a uh, math word problem, okay, you want to read the problem at least three times, okay? So you read the problem once just to kind of get your bearings on what's going on. Read it again to start really, you know, comprehending, absorbing the information. And then the third time you read that problem, look at the question. What is the specific question? So we have this truck. It has 28 gallons, right, and it's gas tank, right? That's like you know, when you fill it up, it has a 28-gallon capacity. Um, it can travel, all right, 40 miles on 1.7 gallons. But what is the question here? We're, we're looking for how far, how far can it go on 19 gallons? So we're looking for how far, we're looking for distance, we're looking for miles, right? So that is the question. Now, I'm going to uh, kind of give you a little bit of a twist in this problem. 
oftentimes, well, not, I don't want to say often, but sometimes, okay, uh, uh, math teachers, if you can believe it or not, they try to get uh, a little tricky on you. <laughs> now, math teachers and people who make math tests, whether it's a, some sort of standardized test like the GED or SAT, they throw in extra information that's not relevant or not necessary for you to know, has nothing to do with your ability to solve the problem. Okay, so let me make sure I said this in a clear way. Sometimes you can read a math problem, like okay, a math word problem, and you know your inclination, which is a good inclination, is that you must use every single piece of information in that problem. That sometimes is not the case, okay? Again, math teachers and people who make a test, they'll throw in extra uh, information just to try to throw you off. So, you know, this is why you got to read the problem and just pick out what you need to know, but you need a strategy, okay? So I'll talk about uh, what is an extra piece of information that's not relevant uh, to uh, solving this problem in a second. But let's go ahead and model the situation. So after we know what's going on, let's see if we can kind of create some sort of visual model, okay? So, you know, here I'm drawing a little uh, road. Here's my little truck. So I know what? Well, I know that this little truck went, you know, 40 miles and one point, on 1.7 gallons, right? So here's my truck, and I know its gas tank has 28 gallons, or I have 28 gallon capacity, right? But if you think about it, what do I want to know here, okay? How can I determine uh, how far this thing can go on 19 gallons? Well, I'd like to know the mileage of the truck, right? The miles per gallon. So I'm like, yeah, you know, if I knew the miles per gallon, then I could figure this uh, question out. So the, you know, the next question is, well, do we have enough information to figure out miles per gallon? Now, of course, the miles per gallon can change whether you're on you're doing city driving or, or driving on the road. And when it comes to math problems as well, don't uh, look for trouble by saying, well, you know, is this city driving? Is it, you know, don't like doubt the prom. Always think of the prom as being as, you know, simplified, all right? So uh, even though there are other variables here, just disregard those things that, you know, are true in real life. Okay, so what we want to know is what is the, um, you know, miles per gallon on this truck? In other words, how, you know, what is its rating? Well, we have some information here that uh, can uh, tell us that, right? So we know that it went 40 miles on 1.7 gallons. So we need the MPG for this truck. We need the miles per gallons. So this is what we call a rate in mathematics, Mile, miles per gallons. We're comparing two different units of measure. We're comparing miles with gallons. And this little P right there, that per, is a fraction mile, uh, fraction bar, okay? So another way to think of miles per gallons is miles divided by gallons, one mile per one gallon, okay? So uh, if you have like 30 mpg, uh, all right, if your car is 30 miles per gallons, it's, it's stating that it can go 30 miles, right, on one gallon, Right, so here I kind of actually misspoke with one mile, one gallon, but we're talking about miles per gallon as a unit of measure. So what we want to do here is get what we call a unit rate. So we're just going to divide uh, here. We have 40 miles. We know that this uh, truck went 40 miles on 1.7 gallons. Okay, so here's gallons down here in our denominator, miles in our numerator. So 40 divided by 1.7 gives us 23.53 miles per gallon. This is our unit rate. So this is how, um, uh, you know, this is the mileage or how efficient this truck is, right? This is how well it can go on one gallon of gas, right? It can go 23.53 miles per gallon. Now I did a little bit of rounding off and that could affect your answer. So anyways, you should get something around 23.53 or 23.52. Okay. Now, here's my next question. Now that I know the mileage of this truck, I know that the truck can go 23.53 uh, 23 miles on one gallon. And the question is what? Well, the question is how far can it go on 19 gallons? Well, it seems like a pretty direct way to uh, get the answer, right? 
So this is how many miles it can go on, uh, how many miles it can go on one gallon. All right, well, how many miles can it go on 19 gallons? Well, should we just multiply this by 19? Yes, absolutely. But let's talk about that piece of the problem that is extraneous, okay? So in other words, in the problem, it says a truck has a 28 gallon gas tank. Do we really need that information? Is that information like relevant to this problem? No, it doesn't make a difference. This thing could have had a 25 gallon gas tank or a uh, 35, doesn't make a difference. It's not gonna have any influence on how to figure out the right answer. So be careful because that often, you know, when you get this extra information, you know, students will be like, oh, well, how do I use the 28? There's that information in uh, the problem. I must be able to, you know, I have to use it in some way. So again, be on the lookout for these little tricky situations. But let's go ahead and figure this problem out now. So we know that this truck has a miles per gallon rating, you know, at this, uh, you know, uh, road condition, if you will, as 23.53 miles per gallon approximately. So that means it goes 23.53 miles on one gallon. So how many uh, miles will go on 19 gallons? Easy, just take that 19 and multiply by 23.53 and we are gonna get 447.07 miles. Okay, so that is the answer, but I'm not done yet because I wanna make sure you understand how we're dealing with units of measure, okay? So the truck, or the question is, we're talking about how many uh, uh, miles, okay, will you travel on 19 gallons? And we know that our, our um, uh, mileage here are, is, let me kind of write this out here, is this is miles per gallon, and we're multiplying by gallons, okay? So let's just make sure we're doing this correctly with the units of measure. So 19 gallons, or 19 over one, being multiplied by the MPG, which is miles per gallon, but I'm gonna write it this way, 23.53 miles per one gallon. That's what that means, okay? Now when I multiply these things across, all right, these uh, values, notice I have gallons down here in the denominator, and gallons up here in the numerator, these are gonna cross cancel and I'm left with miles. So 19 times 23.53 will give me 447.07 miles. So, you know, this is really the most technical correct way to do this because we are dealing with units of measure. Although if you said, oh yeah, I could just take that 19 and multiply by that, you'll get the right answer. Just make sure you understand how to work with units of measure because it's very, very important with any problems that are dealing with units of measure. You gotta know how to, you know, uh, make sure you are in fact, um, you know, have the right conversion factors, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we covered quite a bit of uh, stuff. This seems like a pretty straightforward, easy problem. Uh, hopefully a lot of you out there said, yeah, this was not that difficult. But again, when we kind of deep diver, when we take a, you know, a closer look at the mechanics of the problem, uh, especially with uh, units of measure and also being, you know, wary of extra information that's trying to throw you off, you know, try to learn, you know, something uh, from any problem you do. And you should always attempt any math problem. You should never look at a problem and be like, ooh, that's way too hard for me to even try. You should always try, just see how much you know of the problem. But here's the bottom line. If you want to improve in mathematics, especially math word problems, there's only one way to do that, and that is through practice, okay? It's one thing to watch me to do problems, but it's a whole nother thing for you to do them on your own. So, you know, uh, math word problems are gonna be in all level of mathematics. So if you're in algebra or geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and you need help with word problems, just check out those respective math courses uh, in my math help program. If you need a quick refresher on basic math, if you're kind of getting back into it, you just want to strengthen your kind of basics, check out my math foundation course. It's a great little mini course just to kind of review some of the elementary stuff that we learned back in, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade that was so important that most of us uh, have forgotten. So that's maybe a good place for you to start as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.